Hello friends. Today I'll be covering custom sort algorithms in JavaScript. JavaScript's array.sort defaults to a string sort, and this can catch people off guard when they try and sort an array of numbers. Let me show you what I mean. Here I have an array of numbers, and you can see that 10 and 15 are actually in between 1 and 3. And even though my array consists of only numbers, the sort algorithm is going to convert all of those numbers into strings and then perform a string sort on each one. And this may seem kind of strange at first, but then when you consider that JavaScript could have an array that looks like this, where you have uh, a mixture of numbers, strings, and even objects, that there's no real way that JavaScript could figure out how to sort the array properly. So that's why it defaults to a string sort. And this is where the custom sort function comes in. So we can create any function uh, to be a comparison function that takes two items and then compares them. And the way that it works is we're going to return negative one if A is less than B, we're gonna return one if A is greater than B, and then we return zero if both of the items are equal. So I'll demonstrate this by creating a compare numbers function. And I can actually write this very easily as A minus B. So when they're equal, it'll return zero. If A is less than B, it'll return negative one. Otherwise, it'll return one. And then all I have to do is take this function and pass it into my sort algorithm. And now that sort is using our compare numbers algorithm, I can see that everything's sorted correctly. And we can create some fairly complex sorts. So let's say I wanted to um, take this mock customer data and sort it by the amount of orders. So what I wanna do is return uh, this one first, second, and third, because it has one order, two, and three orders. I would just have to create a custom function, so const compare order length, and again, that's gonna take an A and a B, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take A.orders.length minus B.orders.length. And to do the sorting, I would just have to take customers.sort and pass it my function. Now if I look, I can see that it's sorting in the correct order. So let's look at something just a little bit more complicated. This example actually comes from a real world use case. So this is an example of a response I got back from an API where everything is actually a string. Even though it does contain a couple of numbers, those numbers were being passed back as strings. And the business requirement on this were to sort all of the numbers first and then all of the strings second. From the code's perspective, everything's a string, but the business doesn't care. They wanted all of the numbers sorted first by number order and then all of the strings second by string order. And to create this, the algorithm actually wasn't that bad. First, I just needed a function to detect numbers so I call that is numeric. And what that does is it takes a number and I can check to see is nan number. And what is number will do is it's going to return true on any of these number strings that are coming back and it will return false on the strings. So now I can write the custom compare function and that is still going to take an A and a B, just like all the other functions. Now I have a couple of different use cases here. One is if A is a number and B is not a number, then I'm gonna return negative one. And that's because I want the numbers to have a higher priority than strings and vice versa. So if A is a string, and B is a number, I'm gonna return one. And then we can test if they're both numbers, I can just return A minus B. And if it hasn't matched any of these, I can just return A is less than B, then we will return negative one, otherwise one. And this works with strings, so uh, this will work perfectly for what we've got. So now let's sort response and see what this is going to look like. And there we have it, all the numbers are first, sorted in number order, and the strings are second, sorted in string order. Now, of course, this isn't the most efficient way, right? We should probably be caching is numeric in a value inside of the function instead of calling it this many times. 
but this function is just for demonstration purposes on what you can do with sorting. So I'll leave those optimizations up to you. So I'd like to thank you for making it to the end of the video. I really do appreciate you spending your time with me. And just a reminder when subscribing, you've got to click the bell also, or you won't get notifications when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.